come up with the greatest movie idea of all time. What? She's on her way. Then why isn't she? Oh, here she is. Come on. I hope you were. Hello. Sit I down and take notes. I want no sleep, 10 cups of coffee, two cans of Red Bull, and a bag of Twizzlers for lunch. And I have come up with the greatest movie epic of all time. All time. Uh-huh. Okay. So, there's a man, a woman, and a baby. A special baby. A special baby. Um, you mean like the seed of the devil kind of a baby? No, the opposite of that. Uh, okay. He's special, but in a good way. <laughs> a great way. Alright, well, we could work with that. That's an interesting twist. A family movie with a love story between the baby's parents. Oh, yeah. The baby's parents. Oh, the baby's parents-to-be have to travel to the father's hometown, but then they get there and all the hotels are closed, so they end up in a warehouse, a shipping container. Nice, nice. Like an art house, bohemian kind of feel. Set design is going to love that. Then there's the crisis. Let's see. Oh, I know. She goes into labor at the worst possible time. Yeah, I love it. They can't find a doctor, so they need some kind of makeshift crib, yada, yada, yada. Oh, and then some blue-collar guys coming from town to help. Blue-collar? Yeah, you know, working stiffs. Mm, welders, dock workers, farmers. Farmers. Coming to a warehouse in the middle of the city. Yeah. Uh, why? Because only the common man knows that this baby is special. Okay, okay. I think I know where you're going with this now. Something that the regular working person can relate to. And the farmers come out to help in some way. Help out. Hang out. I don't know. You're the writer. You figure it out. Oh, I got it! The first scene ends with a long pull-out camera shot of the father, the mother, and the baby, and the visitors for an iconic final shot. Nice. That could work. But what does this baby do that's so special? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing yet. Ooh. I see a sequel coming. So can you do it? Yeah, it's a little sparse, but I think I can make something of it. It's a great premise. It's a feel-good story. It sets up a sequel. Um, I could make it into a full-length movie or a book. Or maybe both. Add a little more to punch it up. Um, okay, but I don't think I need anything else. You know, I started with a lot less than this. Yeah, but I really want the birth itself to be special. <coughs> like an alien kind of fringe thing where the kid comes exploding out. No! No. Okay. Not the birth. The conception. The conception. Uh-huh. You want the conception to be special. Like Boom Chicka Wow Wow? <laughs> That's an entirely different movie, I have to tell you. That could cause some problems with the rating boards, so I don't know. Boom Chicka Wow Wow? What is wrong with you? There will be kids watching this movie. Um, kids? Where? Uh, we're in your office, remember? There'll be kids watching the movie. I want it to be PG. PG-13 at the most. So no boom chicka wow wow. The opposite of that. What kind of special conception is the opposite of that? You're the writer. You figure it out. Taxes! I hate taxes! Why are you writing this down? 
Okay. Um, I just think it's just so political, though. Animals! I love animals! <laughs> okay. Um, animals. You mean like dog or cat? Oh, I know. A talking pet that rescues the baby. Talking animals? Please, let's be realistic here. Yeah, because um, that would be the crazy part, right? Please. Yeah, just <coughs> some place where there'd be livestock around. Oh, I know. We need exotic visitors from a foreign land. With fancy guests, of course. Okay, so now you're saying it's a huge costume drop. You know, this budget is going to go through the roof. A crazy king who does something so evil people will gasp in horror. Now that is a big move. So it's a horror movie. An escape to a foreign country. Now that's an epic. Epic isn't the word that I would use. Uh, more like schizophrenic. What was that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, but you're talking Hunger Games sizes here. Three to four books and movies. If I can make all this work, I don't I don't think I can. It's not gonna make sense. A star. <clears throat> yes, now you're talking. If we could get a big star to sign on, we could get this free lighted. Like Russell Crowe, Jennifer Lawrence. Oh no, no, not that kind of star. I mean like a star in the sky, like a comet. Uh -huh. Hurtling towards the earth to destroy the earth like a disaster movie. The opposite of that. What's the opposite of that? Oh, and angels. Angels coming and going all over the place. And a musical number. Uh huh. So you mean like Broadway now? Bigger. Maybe we'll just have to have the angels do a musical number. That's perfect. Listen to this, okay? You ready? All right, I'm listening. It splits history in half. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Yeah. So, let me get this right. <clears throat> you want a feel-good family love story Art house, a political costume drama, horror, escape, disaster that's not a disaster, supernatural, mu musical, historical, epic, with animals and angels. Is there anything else? Peace. Uh huh. Okay, peace. No, no, no. The, the story brings peace to the whole world. Of course it does. What would it take to do all that? Um, besides, like a million dollar budget. Yeah, besides that. I don't. I just don't know. This is like Lord of the Rings territory now. Now we're talking three to four huge books, five to seven movies, maybe a theme park. You're practically creating a new religion. Oh no, no. The last thing the world needs is a new religion. Well, I'm glad to hear that you draw the line somewhere, but I don't see how any of this is going to make sense in the same story. You'll just work on it and get back to me in a week. All right, all right. I'll talk to you soon. One week later. <laughs> oh, thanks, Doc. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. Today's my first day back in the office since that <clears throat> episode I had last week. I'm waiting on a screenwriter to come in. I think I might have scared her a little bit last week. And I should probably apologize. Oh, here she is. I gotta go. Huh. Hi, you know, I never did get there. Never mind that. Never mind that. It, there it is. Here it is. It's the best thing that I've ever written, and it's all in there. What? What's all in here? Everything that we talked about. Everything. It's a feel-good 
family, love story, art house, political, costume drama, horror, escape, disaster that's not a disaster, supernatural, um, musical, historical epic. It's all in there, and guess what? It has animals and angels. It's all in right there. Uh, uh. Yeah. Security, we have a code red. Listen, last week when you were in here, I wasn't exactly feeling myself. And I may have said a few things that were a little crazy. Crazy is a little strong, but, um, no, 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 you were crazy. But then something came over me. I don't know what it was. And I just started writing. <clears throat> and this is what I came up with. It's all in here. I know it sounds a little crazy. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. But would you please give this a read? Sure, sure, I'll read it. But first, I think I'm gonna have some friends of mine take you to see another friend of mine, okay? Okay. All right. So, yeah. Cause we're just gonna just gonna sit down here uh -huh. and and um um uh yeah. We're you're gonna go see some some sure, a yeah, friend of mine, right? Sure. Uh -huh. Sure. I went, it's all right, man. Yeah. Uh huh. It's all right. Okay. Okay. See you next sure year. Sure read it. Uh, please make sure you read it. Well, I guess it couldn't hurt. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to, make, to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be, child, will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger 
because there was no room for them in the inn. And, and he gave her the name Jesus. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest, and on earth peace to the men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed of what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard of this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may too go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to hurry, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up and took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where they stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled, a voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, 
for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. What we've seen today is a retelling of the story 
Can you hear me? A skit that says, wouldn't it be ridiculous? Wouldn't it be hard to imagine? Wouldn't it be hard to put pen to paper and come up with a story so amazing that God would care so much about his people that he would put a star in the heavens. He'd have ordinary people come from afar. He would have kings come. He would have a small baby born. In other words, infinity encapsulated in the most sensitive, frail, amazing form. When we think about what God does to reach us, the story you saw today is amazing. Is it real? History says it was. And I think the whole idea today of this drama is for you to decide, is it real in your heart, in your mind? Because you can see from the dancing sail, from all the pageantry, all of the demonstration, putting the story right there so you can see it. It's not just words, but it's real. And I know in my life, when I was in college a million years ago, it finally became real to me. It was so real that I invited Christ into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. I remember hearing a scripture, I don't know, somebody shared with me about John, the book of John, and then I realized there was a New Testament separated from the Old Testament. And I realized that God said, I have a plan for you that I would come and that I would make it possible for you to live beyond just the flesh, beyond ordinary life. It was an eye-opening experience for a college student. And when you get to John chapter 3, and it talks about for God so loved the world that he sent his son in the most amazing Amazon delivery ever. That little package had everything that ever mattered to anyone right there saying that if you believe that he is the son of God, and that someday he would rise up to be special. And so special that if you know him, if you embrace him, like we all want to do with a small child. And if you welcome him into not just your mind, into your heart. And what does it say in John 3? If you allow yourself to be born again and invite Christ into your heart. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Is this story knocking on your heart? It's not just a drama. It's an invitation. Behold, I want to be in your life. This story of God is an invitation to you to know Him personally. So I'd like you to bow your heads. And I know, I know human nature. There's no peeking allowed, okay? We have hall monitors. We have everyone roving this place. No peeking. Because I want you to talk quietly to God. Heavenly Father, we know that every one of us needs to be private with you. Lord, we ask that you would cause that story, that amazing event of Jesus coming from heaven to earth to be real in our minds, in our hearts, and that it would be a fruit basket upset. So much 
that our worlds are flipped upside down. And it won't be right side up unless you are in our lives. That you are the foundation. That you, who are the way, the truth, and the life, are everything to us. Lord, help us to yield ourselves to you. Help us to decrease so that you might increase. Help us to find room in our hearts for baby Jesus. And may that make all the difference. So Lord, tonight, it feels like night because it's dark in here, I guess. But Lord, today, speak to us and invite yourself into our hearts. And if we wandered away from you over time, Lord, we pray that today we would get it right. That we would yield ourselves again and then allow you to be Lord and Savior. Christ who is King. We ask this to be real and true today.